Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host Muhammad Azam. First of all, happy Thanksgiving to everyone and Eid Mubarak to everyone. All right. So let's get started now. Um, in this particular screencast, I will show you how you can do validation using IDATA error info class. So we do have our models, okay? And uh, this is our customer class. It doesn't really have anything right now. I'm just going to remove addresses also. Um, basically, in the first part, you saw that you can do the validation inside the controller, but maybe you don't want to do that. So there's another way of doing it, which is IDATA error info. And what you're going to do is you're going to implement the IDATA error info interface. I'm going to expose two properties over here, which is the first name and last name. Oh, okay, here we go. Once in. And uh, for the error thing, I'm just going to return empty because we won't be using this property. And we're going to create a dictionary which will be of string and string errors new dictionary okay now uh, for the properties I'm just gonna make first name and get return first name and inside the set we are going to actually check that if string dot is null or empty value if the value is empty I'm just gonna insert it into the collection that I have, a dictionary, and the key, oops, key will be one first name, and I can say now first name cannot be blank. Okay, and uh, then we'll have first name equal to value. Just go ahead and copy, same thing for last name. In properties to last name last name and then just going to say last name last name last name okay and now in this particular so we're going to retrieve it from the collection so we, what we're going to do is I'm just going to say that if uh, errors dot contains it's like underscore errors which is our dictionary dot contains the key the column name provided okay and then simply going to say okay return the errors and column name else I'm just going to return string dot empty all right let me build this so right now our structure is in place. Our class customer now inherited from idata error info. We have implemented the dictionary, which is of type string and string. This one is a key. This one is the actual message. First name, when we are setting, we are checking that if it's null, then we insert a error inside our errors collection. And then finally, we are returning this collection, but provided that the column name is actually given. Okay, column name, property name, whatever you like to call it, okay? Let's go to the view. So here's our view. It currently just contains the uh, first name and so we're going to use the same format, which is like validation message, use the same key and uh, to decorate it with this. So this validation message will actually appear for each of uh, our text box controls and we can also add a different thing which is called the HTML validation summary which will display the messages that we are already set in our idata error info which is actually our customer in this case so it will display these messages first time cannot be blank and all of that okay if you go to the controllers and home controller you're going to see that this save will be fired when we submit the button. So we can actually say that if a model state uh, dot is valid, well, if it's not valid, then we just want to return the current view, which is actually new. And if it
it is a valid, then we're going to see confirmation. So let's go over here. Let's refresh this view. And what we're going to do is we're not going to enter anything. I'm just going to say save. And you can actually see that the validation effect triggered. This is the summary control displaying the error messages. And this is the first name. This is, I don't know if you can notice, but it's a little bit pink color and a red asterisk indicating that you cannot leave the first name blank or the last name blank. Okay. So this was a simple way of validating uh, the user input if you are uh, using if you the iData error info uh, interface and if you inherit from the iData error info in interface. In the next video, I will show you how you can perform the same thing, which might be the easiest one to do uh, by using the data annotations. Okay. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, suggestions about upcoming videos, uh, new videos, you can email me at azamsharp at gmail.com. Also, visit highoncoding.com. There are tons and tons of articles, screencasts, and podcasts over there. And I'm going to, uh, I, I will be sure that you actually enjoy it. Okay. Thank you very much.